Welcome to the brave new world of social media, where most of us get our news and political information. The upside is we get to participate in this conversation as never before. We comment, we share, we tweet, we retweet. But our favorite social networks have also amped up the power of the opinionators. Sometimes this activates us. Because if there is ever a time to stand, the time is now. And sometimes it feeds us distortion. It's just a stupid opinion. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a misunderstanding of my name's Juana Summers, and I'm an editor for CNN Politics based in Washington, D.C. One of the great things and one of the horrible things about social media is that everybody can have their say. It's kind of a marketplace of ideas, and some voices that sometimes are not correct or have a very partisan slant can oftentimes get amplified. It wasn't always this way. With Trayvon Martin's killing in 2012 by George Zimmerman, we saw a new pattern of coverage emerge. Trayvon's death became a meme that led to an agenda war on social media and a now familiar shouting match on cable television with wildly diverging narratives based on where you turned or clicked. Jim Rutenberg, media columnist, The New York Times. We are in a whole new world where Twitter, Facebook, and social media are driving coverage nationwide. So CNN, Fox, MSNBC is going to pick one side. And if enough people like the way it sounds and want to believe it, it's off to the races. The wheels are in motion for a complete character assassination of Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin, Martin behaving in a thuggish manner, assaulting if you George want to look Zimmerman. For a thug, how about the guy who chased down the 17 year old and shot him in the chest? What we want when we're covering race is some kind of national conversation that leads us somewhere good. But if you're only going with the divided take, us against them, right against left, it's hard to see us coming to some place of reconciliation. Now that we can program our own news diet online, it's even easier to seek out what we want to believe. The irony is that instead of expanding our worldview, social networks can easily become accomplices in shrinking it. I'm Brooke Gladstone, the co-host and managing editor of On the Media, a national program produced by WNYC. There is a tendency in the digital media for a heightened phenomenon to occur, incestuous amplification. If you are in an echo chamber where you're only speaking to like-minded people, it tends to heighten the extreme voices and marginalize the moderate ones. It creates an atmosphere that is incredibly intolerant online. And if Facebook is your go-to news source, it pays to understand how it works. Facebook's main goal is to keep you on its site. Its algorithm is set up to give you what you want. An algorithm is a formula that Facebook engineers have put together to maybe even know what you like before you know what you like. If you don't relish the idea of a computer algorithm responding to your likes and dislikes, you have to figure out how to curate your news for yourself. Certainly, the news choices that you make will help determine your view of an event of the world. Even more important, your view of the world determines what your news choices are. It really begins with you. So the question is, what do you do? I would love it if I could tell every person in America to read something you violently disagree with once a week. If you're a diehard MSNBC watcher, go turn on Fox. If you love to read Breitbart and Town Hall, go listen to NPR for a day. Maybe there's something there for you to challenge your assumptions and the things that you typically read. You can employ deputy curators on Twitter, say. You find people who are experts in the areas that you care about going beyond the usual suspects and actually clicking further distances than you normally do. If you're just swiping through your Facebook or your Twitter, go past the headline or the image that you're seeing and ask, what's the full story? What's the source of the information? And just being really critical of that. Today, it only takes a minute to Google something you see online and find out if it's been updated or fact-checked. Don't reflexively retweet. You are feeding back into the system that is feeding into you. You're a part of this now. The great news about the advent of social media is that there is more information at your fingertips. You can take advantage of that, and you can be the best informed citizen in history. In the digital age, everyone with a keyboard can be a creator or a distributor of content. We have more power than ever, and with that comes responsibility. 
It's on us to be our own media keepers and to engage thoughtfully in the evolving landscape of digital democracy.